Pedos y Tuperas. Today on Duke by the River, it is part two of the playoff episode of Duke by the River. Our Philadelphian are literally about 24 hours away of playing in the first playoff game this season, and we're going to discuss that, everything else in the MLS Cup playoffs. And don't go anywhere, guys, because we're talking about that all here on Duke by the River. And let's get this started. Hey, duck! Welcome everyone to Do by the River, the show where we follow everything Philadelphia Union, brought to you by Philly Sports Network. And before we move forward, guys, please do not forget to show us some love in here over at Do by the River. Uh, make sure to check us out on PSN Radio, and also make sure to like and subscribe to Ed Barcelona Philly's YouTube channel. We always put up all the video uh, podcast episodes up on there, so you guys can get the visuals if you would like. So make sure to show us some love, just a little bit of love. All right, and today joining me to break down everything Philadelphia Union, everything. MLS soccer I have first up we got my man Mr. Justin Freiburg he's got again he's in playoff mode he's got the Red Bull Union match from last year you guys remember the first ever playoff win in Union history he's got the vibes going Justin what's going on how you feeling with about 24 hours away from our first playoff game this year I'm uh I'm feeling pretty good I mean you know we do have to face New England for you know <laughs> what it, I mean this is the uh, the best of seven series here and uh I mean you know, if there were any other playoffs we would have uh we've said out of the game the series is over guys we already beat them enough times um, so I don't know we'll see I'm excited but it's New England again so I mean yeah woohoo I, I know, right? We'll, we'll, we'll dive. Right. We'll talk about that thoroughly, but I definitely, man, I'm I'm, not, I'm tired of seeing that same team again and again, and the fans running in their mouth again and again. All right. Also joined with me here. We got back our guy, our number ten. Or no, actually, you know what? Tim is the freaking number nine of this freaking podcast. Here. The number nine of this podcast, <laughs> Mister Tim Lovingood. Tim, what's going on, buddy? Welcome back, baby. Oh, thank you. I'm uh, I'm a little in shock that I, you know, I went from a 10 to a nine. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see if I can live up to that and then score, <laughs> score some goals. No, um, but I'm, I'm excited to be back. I'm excited for the Union's playoff game here uh, tomorrow. And I'm excited to, to talk MLS. You know, MLS Cup playoffs are in full swing. Uh, we got a few other things to talk about as well, but it's it's great a great time of year for uh, MLS all these crazy games that are happening you know we got PKs we got extra time we got everything to talk about so I'm oh just- yes we got a lot to talk about but before we move forward guys look we don't like to get too serious here but we understand that there are more important issues in hand other than the beautiful sport that we love in soccer um, if you guys haven't heard uh, I mean it's actually been you know been brought up a, a couple times over the past I would say year um, the allegations of uh, sexual harassment by uh, David Villa when he was with NYCFC um, towards a training staff member. Um, it, th- it was a very interesting story brought out today uh, by The Athletic and Pablo Maurer. Um, it's some pretty telling stuff, guys, um, but it's not pretty. It's really not pretty. Look, it's not a good look for David Villa. Um, look, I, regardless, I feel like this is a sport uh, especially the fans in this country are so open to the, the everyday problems that go on around the world, not just what we love in soccer. And for this story to hop pop out like this really, I think it hurts all of us because we understand like these stories, we've heard them countless of times and we're not going to go deep into, you know, the, the you know, the different stories like this, but uh, we just kind of want to talk about it. And as far as what it means for our sport here, um, Tim, like give us what you know, as far as, cause I, I know you, yeah. You stay up on Pablo's done, done some pretty good articles. Um, you stay on top of that, but uh, what, what can you give us like any further details and your thoughts really um, on this crazy story, dude? Yeah, I mean, you, you kind of you know said a little bit. This story has been sort of ongoing. Um, there were reports of this, you know, into last year also that there, you know, these things, you know, were happening. Mm-hmm. Um, there wasn't any, you know, concrete at least at the time it seemed like from it um, obviously uh, everyone in the community MLS community soccer community is like oh wow this is involving David Villa that's that's crazy like this yeah. is this is a really bad look um, to oh, be yeah. honest I haven't uh, been able to read the article that came out yet um, but I plan to do that um, because I believe it's a, a first-hand account I don't know if Justin has heard more about it either um, 
from from a victim there. Um, so I, I definitely want to to read that and to really uh, understand more of what's going on. And yeah, my thoughts on it are that it's crazy that, that this sort of thing is happening um, in in Major League Soccer, especially someone with with such a big name. Um, you know, this is all too common, unfortunately, in workplaces across the world, oh, yeah. um, and it needs to not be. Um, yes. and, and people who are victims do need to speak out. So I am really uh, interested to read um, Pablo's article that, that came out here and to, to see the bravery of this person to come out and to speak out against this and this person who is, you know, larger than life, a you know, World Cup winner, uh, like, you know, someone who's played at the highest level, um, who... May, might think that rules don't apply um so yeah uh, unfortunately i don't have too much more to add uh, but i i'm disgusted if it is true for sure yeah yeah absolutely i mean you nailed it right on the head as well man this is it's crazy um but yeah like it, it doesn't matter you know uh if, if it's true or not like you like you said you need to speak out yeah. Like you need definitely speak out because there's definitely other people who feel the same way and they're just scared to come out. But definitely, um, she is very brave. Uh, Justin, what are your thoughts on this whole incident here? Um, so yeah, like Tim, I, I do want to read the article. Um, mm -hmm. from my understanding, the article is from the person whose main account is from. Yeah, I know there were some secondhand accounts for some from some other people who were willing to step up after the fact. Um, but I, I think, listen, you know, it, it's, yeah, Tim was right. It's something that we've been, we've heard about a year ago and it was said in passing. Yeah. And it was yeah. the start of the investigation. No one knew anything. It was kind of, well, wait a minute. Like it was, I think it was from a, a pretty unverified account. Like it was one of those, like the smaller, you know, secondhand things. And we're like, wait a minute. Like what? What's going on here? And it started blowing up. And I'll be honest, it there are a lot of problems with with the with, you know with the sport that we all love. Um, you know, sexism, racism, homophobia. Uh -huh. This year has made it very very clear um, yeah. that those things have not gone away. Um, yeah. And I, I think I'm just gonna be right, fun. I think the league has to do something about NYCFC because yeah. this is this is very apparent. That there is something toxic with the culture there. You've had, yeah. you've had, you know, you had the issue with the third rail with the, you know, with the white supremacist supporters in the last few years. You have this. There's clearly something. The league has to do something. The team doesn't want to address it. The team has been silent on all of this, whether it's been the white supremacy or the the allegations. And you know, I've started to see more NYCFC fans actually try to keep their team accountable. Yeah, and I, you know, you you know your your clubs are never perfect, but NYCFC, because of the you know the money that they have with the Yankees and with with Citigroup, there's going to be stuff that's going to be tried to be swept under the table, and with that kind of culture, comes a lot of issues, and my concern is that because of the the network that they have. I'm concerned that the league may not want to address this and may not want to really say anything. And, uh, you know, I know Garber has been good for the league, but they, they have to say something. I mean, you're on, you're on the cusp of monumental expansion in this league. You know, you have Austin coming in next year, you have Charlotte and Sacramento and St. Louis in the next three years. And you have at least two more spots after that. You're on the cusp of something huge. And if you don't address this now, it's only going to get worse. And in a sport that's trying to gain a foothold, you know, allowing this kind of, you know, blatant, you know, sexual assault allegations and just general culture of the team is not going to be good for a prospective owners and prospective people mm -hmm. who want to become fans of this league. Yeah. Um, it, it just, it frustrates me because I know there's so many great things about this sport. And then stuff like this reared his ugly head. And it reminds you that despite, you know, what we call you know, the beautiful game, there are some very ugly parts about it. Absolutely. And we just have to, we have to voice it out for sure. We definitely have to voice it out. We, of course, guys, we'll keep you uh, posted with the rest of the story because um, this is, again, serious allegations and uh, we need to highlight it. We definitely need to highlight it here on Duke by the River. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, uh, good stuff there. But let's move on. Let's talk about some of the good stuff that's been going on with our sport. Um, the MLS Cup playoffs, guys. Let's face it. This has been 
entertainment, like pure entertainment for people to watch. I, I, I mean, it's crazy what we haven't even seen. I mean, we'll get into some of these games. Um, but I, we'll, first, I'm going to just get, go over the results real quick, and then we'll, we'll talk about it. So first up, we had on Friday night, we had New England facing off against Montreal and New England. New England would go on to win 2-1. to one. Of course, Bruce Arena alluded to facing off against the Philadelphia Union yet again. <laughs> Gotta love Bruce Arena. Uh, we had Nashville beating Miami 3 to nothing to smack down MLS 2.0. David <laughs> Beckham, you got a long look to look in the mirror, man. Long. Max McCarty with a a – Entire field run and goal. Let's let's not let's you know, b- boy. Uh, Blaze Matweedy must have been going. Oh, I'm going to the MLS. This is going to be easy. And then you see Dax McCarty, essentially an older version of Tim. Let's be honest, the Ginger Club going going strong here. And my lord, uh, Dax McCarty is not fast. Not and it's close. crazy because people said in MLS 2.0 when people were buying all these European, you know, stars, a guy like Dax McCarty, you can't win with. Well, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Dax McCarty showed up on Friday night. That was a nice goal. That definitely was a nice goal. Unbelievable. Absolutely. Uh, and then on uh, Saturday, we had the absolute fireworks. Listen, if you were an American and spent time watching college football at, at, on, on Saturday afternoon, you wasted your goddamn time because Orlando and NYCFC gave us an absolute instant classic in the MLS. That uh, one-to-one with overtime and, and 90 minutes already been played. We had into PK with some of the craziest PK uh, scenarios I've ever seen in my entire <laughs> life. Pretty much we had a uh, – not even a backup goalie. We had a, 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 we had an actual player. Uh, Center back. Yeah, we had to we had to play goalie for uh, Galice, and uh, Orlando still found a way to win in their first playoff appearance and in their first playoff win here. Uh, they won in PKs a six to five. Uh, we had Columbus beating New York Red Bulls three to two. Uh, I call, I want to say I'd like to say I like I called that there. Um, yep. as, on Sunday, SKC beat uh, San Jose in uh, PKs and a crazy one as well. Uh, Minnesota beating Colorado three to nothing. Port- right. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Dallas and Portland uh, again ended in a PK uh, with Dallas winning eight to seven on on PKs. There uh, we had guys. We had six six of the home teams, six out of the seven home teams win in the uh, first round. We had three PKs. Uh, guys, what else could you possibly want from an American playoff system here? Well, you had everything. You absolutely had everything. Now, Justin, I know you had, you, dude. You were with your popcorn every freaking game, watching uh, all these exciting games. What what was your takeaway? What was your biggest takeaway from these first seven matches that we have seen in the MLS Cup playoffs? Uh, we should be bringing back the old school PKs. Is my is my oh my takeaway <laughs> from all of this? But I'm not opposed. I'm I'm honestly I, not opposed. Listen, listen. Starting 35 yards out. Let's do it. Let's bring, let's bring it back. Let's bring it back. MLS 1.0. Let's let's go ball to the balls here. Let's uh, it. no. So. I, I do want to go into, at the very least, the, the Orlando game and the KC game. Mm-hmm. Because the Orlando game, let's be honest, <laughs> bonkers. So to preface the PKs, Gaese gets the yellow for time wasting. Mm-hmm. You know, PKs are going on. The rule, I mean, now they've, now they've been cracking down on goalies coming off their line. And it makes sense. I, it, you know, it, it's, you're, you're gaining somewhat of an advantage. Mm-hmm. So Gaia say, so the so the the MLS so because they run kind of calendar year instead of you know summer to summer, they operate on the prior rules. Right. Well, the despite all the the refs messing up and that they did, and that ref crew has been penalized, they will be not re refing any games for the entirety the rest of the playoffs. Um, but according to the rules from last year, if the, if their goalie the goalie does encroach, it is a yellow card. It's a warning. Was well, it warning in a yellow card? Because guy he was already on a yellow. He then gets the second yellow and red. He sent off, and Ruan had already been sent off a few minutes prior before extra time had ended. So then the insanity starts. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Chapman doesn't know. Doesn't seem to figure out. You know they're getting they're getting you know Brian Rowe ready and. Rodrigo Schlegel comes, comes start, you know, Gaese gives him his gloves and he's starting to put everything on and all of this. And da, 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 da. Brian Rowe is in the net. He is in the net. Castellanos is ready. He's taking about to take the kick. Alan Chapman goes, Whoa, wait a minute. Okay, good. No, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> You're good. No, 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 no. Like three or four times, 
<laughs> they're like, wait, you can't sub the goalie on when the clock has ended. And that's the that's actually what you see, like you saw in the, what was it, the 2018 World Cup. Netherlands did that with Tim Cool, PK specialist. The union did that with John McCarthy in the Open Cup runs. Mm-hmm. You have to do it when there's time on the clock. So because there wasn't time on the clock, you can't do it. So Lego is getting ready. Then the row's like, wait a minute, you can come back on. Then they send it back off again. <laughs> then Schlegel makes one of the ugliest saves. And I mean, that's that, that was that was some seriously ugly saves. Next thing you know, they're celebrating, they're freaking out. <laughs> what Alan Chapman does the, the, the three whistles to end the game. Mm-hmm. Everyone's going nuts. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, most people were going nuts. There's some players who are like, wait a minute, like something doesn't seem right. So in Alan Chapman's excitement, he forgets. He forgets how many people have taken kicks. (laughs) (laughs) So Orlando still needs to make the last kick. Benji Michelle hits it. And the celebration was was big, but it was definitely more muted. It was like, great, you hit it. Woohoo, (laughs) whoop-de-doo. It's like people were like, it took half an hour. To do, and they only had six shooters. Yeah, the the Portland one that had eight shooters took less time. <laughs> it, that was genuinely mind blowing, and that like started what was an, a wild weekend. And then you got the, the KC it. game. KC game. Ugh, I mean, Tim and I were were saying in the chat. I'm like, oh my god, you know, for, you know, Philly OG Shea Salinas scoring a goal, and I'm like, <laughs> what is going on here? Like. This this game is bonkers. <laughs> San Jose might be ruining my entire my entire Thursday pod, the prediction. <laughs> and then yeah, then they tie it. Then Bustio. That's right. You did have San Jose winning, didn't you? Uh no. So I I well I have case I had KC going the whole time. Oh, okay, okay. So I was like, oh my God, <laughs> San Jose's gonna ruin my entire prediction. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay. You know, the four minutes of extra time. I'm like, okay, yeah, you know, yeah, Bustio scores it late. I'm like, all right. And then people are like, wait a minute, is an extra time over? And all the confusion, there were like three minutes of celebrations. And Wondolowski scores in this, the, set, the 98th minute. So the three additional minutes was about the time that, and the refs explained it after the game. The ref, you know, Nina Mikasikagafi did a great job uh-huh. of giving the additional time and allowing it. And man, I gotta say this when you have the MLS's all time leading scorer, how the hell? <laughs> How the hell is he wide open? Two yards from the goal line. I'm sorry that the man is a known as I said, the known quantity in the league. Oh yeah, the man's the most lethal finisher now, according to the record books, <laughs> in the league. How does he score against Belgium? Belgium? And, he, shish, he's yeah, the most most lethal in the MLS. Johnny, let's 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 not let's not confuse that there. And you're looking at it going like, oh my God, Chris Wondolowski is wide open. Like he can't miss this again. Like he can't, no. maybe they can't make another double save. And then, man, <laughs> PKs. It, Crazy, man. As a goalie, I actually say that because PKs are impossible. If you save like 10% of them, you're a good goalie. Tim Milia has a like a near 50% save percentage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is mind blowing. This man was a pool goalie. I mean, we think about pool goalies in Philadelphia. We think of, you know, Brian Silvestri and Charlie Lyon. Yeah. Like, <laughs> not goalkeeper of the year. Like, it, it, and three saves all three. Just it, it, mind blowing. And yeah. that was that was essentially what this entire weekend was. Just Absolutely. Mind blow. Just yes. insanity and chaos and mayhem and it's so 2020 and so mls and i love but but guys it was another step into the growth of mls dude no other playoffs is keeping you this entertaining i am sorry the nba as much as much drama as those guys bring that it wasn't as entertaining as the mls was doing for you the mlb let's not even get started on that but this was pure entertainment tim what did you take away from this weekend dude yeah, my my takeaway is is just the the competitiveness. Uh, only Dude. only two teams didn't show up. The two teams that didn't show up were Miami and Colorado, who uh, 
I mean, or yeah. Miami too. Miami, man. COVID Miami cases. currently, yeah, is you know dealing with COVID cases, and Colorado was coming off of dealing with all of their COVID cases. So. <laughs> Literally, like the, that was the reason why they didn't show up. Everyone else came to play, and you know, goals galore in all the matches. Uh, to go back to the the Orlando NYC game real quick, uh, when <laughs> Dago makes that save, no real goalie would make that save. Oh, I, I, I like, Tim, I can definitely say that is that's a save that you could see as a field player, right? That you're making no no goalie because he. He like he basically flops on to right. Like there was no coordination, and he was he was basically upright. And, I, and mm -hmm. I'm looking at that going. That's what I'm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's crazy. So bad for it. Goalies always are. You know, the taught to dive. You have to. You know, guess. Obviously, you need to kind of detect which way you think the ball is going to go, and then you dive. Um, and then that leaves the corners always exposed. So uh, I believe it was Tinner Holm who stepped up for NYC, and he's like, okay, I'm just going to place it in the top corner. Like, this guy is not going to do anything. And because he's a field player and he stands straight up, he can like, <laughs> palm the ball. He just is like, oh, I got it. Like, whoa. This is just crazy. Crazy, crazy with that. Tim Melia is the GOAT at penalty saves for SKC. Um, and then <laughs> last night, last night with uh, – Portland and Dallas. I mean, Portland looks like they get the winner in like the 80th something minute. Uh, I was already asleep by this point, but then Dallas scores a, an equalizer in, in extra time and they go, you know, 120 minutes. And then the PKs and Dallas makes eight and Portland only makes seven. And that's the difference. And Dallas is moving on. They kill my uh, my Western Conference team. I thought Portland was going to make a, a run for the, the cup. Uh, but, yeah, it was uh, just crazy all out. And the competitiveness is what I'm really excited about moving forward. Hey, Tim, they got the MLS's back tournament, man. They don't need the MLS Cup either. I, yeah, I, they, already got, they got their CCL. Honestly, spot. I just wanted it to be Union against Portland because <laughs> – in my version of the bracket that I had tweeted out because I wasn't on the last pod, I had uh -huh. the Union beating every team that they had lost to this year, and I felt that that was some poetic justice. But you know, we, we don't, we can't get that now, so it's fine. <laughs> it's all good as long as we win it all, and as long as we win it all, awesome. I, I listen. I, I don't think the entertainment is going to stop there. I think we are going to continue seeing some more crazy stuff from the MLS playoffs, and I'm here for. It. I'm absolutely here for this pure entertainment. I'll be watching everything. I'll continue doing more content on TikTok. I love the, the feedback. I've been getting make MLS a thing in 2020, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely, I love it. All right, well, guys, what I want to do next is uh, so obviously, tomorrow we finish the first round here. We have three matches. Um, obviously, the third match we're going to wait to preview fully because it's our team. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the first, uh, the other two matchups, matchups we have left in the first round. I want you guys to give me my prediction and then we'll move on to the Philly and New England preview. You guys ready? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So first up, um, we have at 6 o'clock, TFC facing off against Nashville. That should be very good. And then we have another good one at 1030 at night. Uh, these are the, the the two loaves of bread for our sandwich, which is us. Uh, we have Seattle and LAFC at 1030 at night. Again, another good matchup. Uh, Tim, I'll let you start here for the TFC Nashville game. Who do you got on top here winning this yeah. game? Yeah, when I uh, was making all of my uh, my picks uh, earlier last week here, um, I I had Nashville beating Miami. I didn't think they would win as handedly as they did, um, but then I knew that that would set up them against Toronto, and I was like, you know what? I think this team is sound defensively to give Toronto some issues. Toronto's been very good this year. Let's not get that you know misconstrued or anything. But I think with Nashville's uh, defense and then the way that they've kind of broken out of their shell a little bit in the last yeah. year they're scoring some goals they're not scoring a lot of goals obviously they scored three against Miami so that is a lot but Miami didn't really play any defense and Toronto will at least they'll be a little bit more organized um, but I have this one being really close and I have Nashville squeaking out an upset because I love chaos in playoffs and I think <laughs> that Nashville can put off in this game here I love it I love it what about you Justin what you think uh you know I, I I had Toronto advancing in this matchup. I had Nashville winning again, you know, without the Iguains. Uh, I, and I say, I say without the Iguains, without Gonzalo and LGP, I think it was clear that the, the you know, the defensive ability of um, Blaze Matuidi is not existent because as I said earlier, Dax McCarty should not be making a solo run and blasting it low corner. I mean, I'm sure that's probably the longest stretch that Dax McCarty has run 
in, in his whole career. And, and and because he's a holding midfielder, he does not. He's he he's a, he's a box to box. He's not going to do that stuff. And yet, who my lord, he did. Now, my gut was going to go with Toronto, and that's what my prediction was in our last pod. However, I'm feeling I'm feeling feeling a little 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 spicy, little uh, little little hot takes here. And I'm going to agree with Tim. I'm going to go with the upset. I'm going to go in a very close game. I'm going Nashville. I'm saying three to two. I think, three to two. Oh, I wow. Think, I think the, 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 the floodgates could be unlocked. I mean, two of their, I mean, a bunch of their goals were from outside the box. Yeah. And I really don't trust <laughs> that Toronto <laughs> defense. Um, I mean, Omar Gonzalez is terrible. <laughs> I, I he ain't the same. I, I I blame him. I blame him. He's not the same Omar that Subo went up against. Yeah. That's yes. True. I I blame him for the majority of the issues in the last World Cup cycle. Um, oh, I sure. just don't like him. I know yeah. his, his, his 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 the man bun. He he <laughs> can't pull off that. He can't pull off that bun. Dude, just, just chop it off. Just chop it off. Just get rid of it. Um, Very true. I mean, the only thing with that back line, I mean, Westberg's a pretty good goalie. Uh, Lorea is a turned into a damn fine right back, yeah. right back, wing back, mm-hmm. midfielder, kind of whatever they they throw him in. Pizuelo has been the only thing really holding that team together. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Akinola is a good play, young player. Yeah, but I think that team relies too much on Josie's holdup, and I think that or having Akinola run over the top. Uh-huh. I think when with Walker Zimmerman and, and surprisingly Dave Romney yeah. um, have been a surprisingly good uh, center back pairing, uh, you know, the, the, uh, you know, PA's own Daniel Lovitz uh, <laughs> doing a pretty good job. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't think, I mean, he's, you know, he's only in his early thirties, but I didn't yeah. think he had much left in the tank as, Montreal kind of ran him ragged. I mean, he yeah. he bombed it up those wings, and then you have, I believe it's uh, Alistair Johnson, the uh-huh. rookie. Uh, on the other side, both of them are. I mean, they're providing some width, and it, it, that team is starting to look a little threatening. Mm-hmm. So, in the Toronto home game, <laughs> at the Reichler Field. Um, in beautiful Hartford, Connecticut, mm-hmm. I, I I get I know it's 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 messing up my my prediction, at least this round prediction. Um, but I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna change my my tune here and I'm going Nashville. Yes. Nashville. Hey, uh, yeah, I guess. Listen, I guess it's I. They're not an upset, I guess, because I'm going Nashville as well. I'm liking what I'm <laughs> seeing from Nashville. Um, I think their uh, their attack is playing with a little more confidence. They, I th- I think from day one we've seen the structure defensively, the organization defensively, but offensively they couldn't really generate much of attack. But uh, I'm seeing a much more confident uh, Randall Leal. Uh, I've seen uh, Mukator is a solid player as well, and even Dax McCarty is showing up as the leader of Nashville SC here. Uh, I- I'm liking Nashville here. I'm liking the upset here. Of course, we all don't like toronto here on this podcast uh so that would be really interesting to see so uh go nashville absolutely go nashville um and in the other matchup we're gonna see late at night um this one is going to be a rematch of the 2019 western conference finals we have seattle going up against lafc here uh tim what you got here going up uh, against these two yeah my my prediction uh, is one that i'm gonna stick with i have seattle winning this game um and i don't think it should really support anyone i know bob bradley is a great coach um but it seems like with what lafc is dealing with with certain players who are you know possibly testing positive for covid mm-hmm. or have they were you know on international duty they came back they you know they tested positive there's a lot of question marks around that team um this year they just haven't had all the pieces you know there's still a playoff caliber team in mls and i like i said i don't discount bob bradley as a as a manager he could probably get the most out of his team in this type of game but seattle has been 
as consistent as any team this year. Um, there's only been a few times where they've slipped up and, and lost uh, games, and especially at home. I know they don't have fans right now, but uh, you know, them, I believe this is a home game for them, right? Uh, so they'll uh, they'll have that advantage there. <clears throat> and I think that uh, with Jordan Morris, Nico Ladero, uh, just their their whole attack has been lethal, uh, and I think they'll find a way to break down LAFC. Uh, I have them winning. It'll be a close one, but I have them winning two to one. Awesome, awesome, awesome. What about you, Justin? Um, I, I think I think I had this in my my predictions. Uh, LAFC just doesn't seem to be the team that they they were last year. I think there's a lot of reasons. I think Vela not being fully healthy for a lot of the season has been killer. I think you know having Brian Rodriguez and Diego Rossi at some point testing positive. Mm-hmm. Um, you kind of have a makeshift. You're you've been swapping goalies the entire season. You have a semblance of a back line with Mario and Segura, but it's really not what you want it to be. And with Seattle, I mean, this is their time. Whenever it comes to the playoffs, they always just turn it on. I don't know what it is. I mean, they you know what is it? you know they've they've won two of the past five years mm-hmm. and every time coming into those playoffs, they will, it, it, even when they haven't made it to the MLS cup final, I mean, they've made it three of the past five years, but they just, they look different. Mm-hmm. And Schmetzer is a, a good coach. Mm-hmm. I, I think he's a good man manager like Jim. I think not so his tactics may not be the best like Jim's, but they're both good at getting the personalities working towards a common goal, working towards that. And when you have, when you, when you have a, you know, a front that includes Raul Rui Diaz, Jordan Morris, Nico Lodero, yeah. I mean, that, that should be unfair. That really <laughs> should be unfair. That's, that's a really solid – I mean, Lodero, I think underrated is probably the best cam in the league. I know Pozuelo is going to win mm-hmm. the MVP, and I know they're both mm-hmm. up for it. But, you know, Morris and Lodero are going to cannibalize votes from each other. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, it's it's, it's going to be that way, you know, it, it, and with that attack. I mean, Rui Diaz, very underrated striker. I think, you know, they brought him in. It was kind of a low-key signing. Yeah, yeah. It's It's been it's been good for them. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, yeah, rematch of last year's Western Conference final. And uh, I think the result's the same. I think Seattle moves on. I'm going to say yeah. – I'm gonna say three to one. Okay. Um, and I, I think it's it's gonna be two one most of the game. And I think, you know, Jordan Morris is gonna bag a, a late one in <laughs> stoppage time in as he as he always half. does. Yeah. Yeah. It, so it, it's it's one of those things like listen, LAFC will come back, I think, next mm-hmm. year. A lot of these teams may given a full off season, may may come back, yeah. but this year they just COVID just really screwed them up, man. Year. Yeah. Yeah, COVID really screwed them up. And I, we talked about it, too, on the last pod. Um, regardless of what happens, I just think we both thought that Seattle just had too much power. And I still think now that Seattle is just going to win this game. And yeah. for LAFC, you know, I think you just get a couple more pieces and go go at it again next year. But I think that Seattle right now are the better team. All right, guys, we have about a little under tw- about 20 minutes here left. Uh, let's just dive right into this preview here, because the last game we all know, guys, it's the game of all games we've been waiting for all week. Union versus New England for about the hundredth time this season. But regardless, guys, we still need to beat this team again to move forward and get a step closer to what we all want, which is the MLS Cup here. Um, I mean, like, look, like we just said, the Union have not lost to New England this year. And obviously that worries me a little bit. But I just want to believe that with, you know, Andre Blake coming back, which we we, ha- we haven't talked about yet, but, you know, getting Andre Blake back for tomorrow's match is absolutely huge. This guy. Goalkeeper of the year. Yes, goalkeeper of the year. You guys know he's hungry. The criticism he got after last season, he deserves some sort of trophy. Like we've been, I, I've, I've been wishing that he could win something with Jamaica because I knew like with the Union, I wasn't sure if that would happen. But now that we are with the best team in Union history, I want him to go out with a trophy. Um, this is going to be tough, but I'll, I'll, I'll throw this to Tim here first. Tim, what do we need to do? What do you see happening here tomorrow night? 
Yeah, I mean, you touched on Andre Blake. That's just a huge start just to have your goalkeeper of the year back. I know, you know, he might be a little bit rusty, but he has that instinctual save in him. There's at least one where he just makes, you know, last ditch effort. Like it's just a reflex, like, and that's what you need in playoffs. uh, Because he's a leader. Yeah, he's a leader as well. But we know from New England now they they're they're at pretty close to full strength as they've been all year. You know, Gustavo Bo is is back and scoring. Uh, Carlos Hill is back and scoring as well. Yeah, uh, and they kind of have been kind of interchanging as those that number ten, which we've always been saying all year. New England's like a number ten away from being a legit good team in MLS. Maybe now a I think, stagger too, but uh, yeah. Uh. Uh, now I think uh, for you know, the union in this match too, something that can't be uh, understated also is the fact that Jamiro Montero will be able to play in this game because MLS was able to get those charter flights for those international players. And he was able to get one, you know, he was able to come Let's back go. with a charter flight. He will be available. Uh, I, I mean, I'm, I think he's starting, obviously, I think it'll be the normal union starting 11. And to be honest, we've previewed this match so many times that the, the thing that the union have to do to win is to literally just play their game they know what they have to do. They're going to high press. They're going to push the tempo when they have the ball. They're going to look for those overlapping fullbacks to get some crosses into the box from Kai Wagner. Um, yes, sometimes Ray Gatt is up mostly Ali Bedoya with the overlap <laughs> on the right side. Um, <clears throat> Ray will sneak in the box and maybe he'll get a goal. It'll be cool. Uh, no, I just think, uh, I think this team, no, they know what to do. Uh, they've played this team enough. And, and while that might be really hard to beat a team, you know, more than four times in a year because of the amount of times they played. Uh, this union team has really showed that they know what to do against Bruce Arena and this New England team. No matter what Bruce Arena has put on the field, it has not worked against the union, especially at Subaru Park. Mm-hmm. And that's another huge thing. So I, I just see the union going out, playing their game. Um, I have them winning this game two to nothing. Like, I, I just don't, you know, I, I feel like New England could get a goal there. It could be two to one, you know, can't discount Carlos Hill and Gustavo Bo, but they've, uh, you know, I think the Union are just the better team and I think they win. Amen, brother. Amen. Justin, what you got for me? Uh, you know, it, you know it, when, you're, when you face a team five times, which, I mean, man, this feels like baseball. <laughs> uh, you, you're, the Eagles could use that right now. Shoot. Yeah. You're, you're bound. You feel like New England would have bound to have picked up a victory or learned something. Uh-huh. And all I've learned is that Bruce Arena can't solve the, this team. Yeah. It, it's like turned out in Tobago for him. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Ouch. I mean, oh, my bad, guys. <laughs> you, look, you look at this team front, you know, front to back. Andre, back fully healthy. Huge. 100%. I love Matt Freeze. But when you have Andre in the form that he's been in, and from what I've heard, he's been practicing fully for about three or four days. Yeah. And as Jim says, the man is back. Mm-hmm. Yep. So uh, I'll take that. You have a fully fit, fully informed entire back line still. Your, your midfield with Jamiro back, the only person who is out or unavailable will be DeVries, who is out with an injury. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> Baizo reportedly yeah. had to go back to Cameroon for some green card issues. Yeah. Oh, no. Um, yeah, I know. That was my first thought was, oh, no, Corey Burke all over again. <laughs> let's let's hope he, he comes back. Um, he is back, I believe. I believe he, they put it in the injury report. He is um, – he has uh, to quarantine, so he is here in Philly, uh, but he won't be uh, he won't be a- available for the match because. Of okay, good. All right, so he's so back though. <laughs> yeah, he's back. He's back. We're not we're not losing more players to the the bureaucracy that you know that is the immigration process. <laughs> um. So listen, as Tim said, I mean, even the last game, the last game they had they had Bo, they had Carlos Heel back. You have Tejon Buchanan, that you have Hill Bunbury, Adam Buxa, whoever they're throwing in the midfield. Yep. Last time, I believe it was Scott Caldwell. Um, and I'm blanking on everyone else because we win. <laughs> well, oh, I know God. we win subbed on. I mean, and, uh, all of the all of the MLS 2.0 players, yeah. The, the, the <laughs> Reds, the Tommy McNamara, the Kellen Rose. Yes. It, 
you know what the union did? Yeah, Tim was right. What did the union have to do? They have to play the game they've been playing against New England. And, and I think they could have done this the last game. I think they just they have to jam the ball down New England's throats. Yeah. You, uh, C- Cody, uh, Cody uh, Kessler, decent center back. As a rookie, I think he's been playing well. Um, Andrew Farrell, uh, mm-hmm. I think he's a decent center back. He's he's gone through dips in his career where yeah. like, he's been really good and then he's had a bad year and then he's been in and then he's been really good. Like it's kind of been very up and down. He looks like the amateur all star, to be honest with you. It, it it's seriously like you the, the amount of times that the union were making overlapping runs and space was available. It, I mean Bedoya, Bedoya overlapping Ray and and vice versa. You have Brendan making that late tracking run. Casper is pulling this pulling the center backs, mm-hmm. and Sergio is pulling right behind him. Mm-hmm. I mean the the El Brujo, my lord, the man is probably. The most underrated player. He's a Tasmanian the devil, man. Team. He does all the dirty work. Yep. He he gets in there. He cleans stuff up. He breaks up challenges. He's going to, if they're on a counter, he'll take the ugly foul. He'll, 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 he'll do it. No problem. <laughs> That's it's, why I said, like, even though got Carlos Hill is back, like, he's not a match for El Brujo. Yeah. El Brujo's it, got him. It, it's because it's because when you have a guy who's that aggressive and no – he. Early on in, in, in his MLS career, early in the season, you saw El Brujo push it a lot farther. Oh, yeah. I think he was learning what the line was. And the good part about the MLS's back tournament is I think it gave him a concentrated concentrated version of the MLS. It was, bam, here are all these games, compact, here, it's in a bubble setting, it, it's all you're doing is soccer, soccer, soccer. And... I, I think it helped refine his game. Right now, is he prone to a silly yellow? Yes. He so far ha- has gone on that line, and that's been about it. I think the union, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if you guys saw the hype video, but my, I, 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 got a, I got a bit of hype this morning <laughs> watching that, drinking my, drinking my coffee, you know, getting ready for work, and I'm going, uh, sitting, <laughs> sitting here exactly where I am, you know, doing where I'm going. Uh man, like I was like, I, I'm pumped. I'm excited. <laughs> and I think and I think that this team knows, okay, yeah, we won the shield. We have home field advantage. But are we settling? No. I think and the biggest part about this, and this, this is the one thing I've seen for a lot of people, a lot of people have picked the union to win. Yeah. For the people who haven't, the the reasoning behind them not getting a MLS Cup is oh well, you know. Toronto is a known quantity and Columbus is a known quantity and Orlando is really hot this year. But the thing they seem to forget is Philly is playing at home. They are at home. They win. They're at home. Right. And the union yeah, at home this year. Yes, sir. The union have always been a good team at home. But this year it's been that much more amplified and that much better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I really like, you would think, like, after so many times, you would get nervous about playing the same team over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. But the union keep finding ways to – like, they, they handle it. They've been handling it. And it's why I've, I'm not – I've never been overlooking every time we face New England. But, I, but I'm confident we can beat them. And I've been saying this every time we've played them. I'm confident we can beat them because, like, we know them. And also, yeah. statistically, we've played the best against – New England and any team in the MLS in our history, we play good against New England. I don't know yeah. what it is. We just we just love, you know, that messing with Robert Kraft. I guess, <laughs> I guess the city of Philadelphia lo- loves loves Robert Kraft. He may not love us, but we love him. Yeah. And I, I, I'm obviously he going. Likes with McMill. The, That's about it. Yeah, <laughs> it I'm obviously valid. going with the Union this with this game. I'm thinking three Let's to go, one. Babe. Let's go, baby. I'm thinking it's going to be, yeah, I think it's going to be 2 nothing, and then I think, you know, Heal or, or Gustavo Bo are going to put one that's going to, it's going to, going to scare us for a little bit, and then we're going to have that goal like we did with Corey. Corey Burke off the bench, yeah. They're going to knock, gonna knock it out. That's boom. You know, killer threat down their throats, game over. One, 
one thing to to jump in there too uh, i was just pulling up new england stats against montreal which montreal didn't look great against new england um Not at but all. new england didn't look good either like the you know they they had a bunch of shots um yeah. but the they allowed um montreal to score a goal when montreal only put five shots on target like the union are going to put more than five shots on yeah. target and it was uh, and, it, and i remember because i watched the game yeah that montreal goal was out of the run of play and it was yeah it was it was on a, it was a, a, a ball swung into the box yeah. And the union have no problem with swinging the ball that's, into the box. That's what they've been doing and against yeah, them all it, year. We're, we're definitely we're definitely not going to have five shots on net. If anything, our average is going to be like fifteen to twenty shots. The way the last few games have gone. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I listen. I agree with Justin. I think that New England might be able to bounce out in front of us and scare us for a little bit. A little bit. I think that this team is built differently. I think that this team is the strongest team we've ever seen in Union history. I know they played really well. I'm talking about this is a mentally tough soccer team, and I think that is what is going to be the difference. You know, New England can try everything possible as they can. The fact of the matter is. That is what you guys have said, a MLS 2.0 club. And Cardinal's heel is a solid number 10. Don't get me wrong. He's a solid number 10. He can create. He can score on his own. But he's no match for a Jose Brujo Martinez, who already in his first year has made a case for himself for being a top five number six in this league right now. Guys, I, I don't see how the union loses this game. I think we will get the scare. But again, playing Kurt, Kurt, Jim, curtain ball right here, right? We'll bounce back in the second half, and we will get this absolute W. It's so funny. Um, there's weirdly a, a big New England Revolution community on TikTok, believe it or not. I don't know how or why they're not on the other they, apps, but they it is where they're their sorrows and TikTok. Yeah. Well, they come to me at looking for some sort of hope, not realizing most of their fan base hates me already. But um, it, it, someone, uh, there was a Boston sports fan asked me, Hey, I'm trying to get into the Revs. What can you tell me about them? And so quite simply, cause he's obviously a, a Celtics fan. I said, look, they are like the Orlando magic or like the Charlotte Hornets. This is a team that's got good players. Like you, you mentioned them. There's are some good players that you mentioned, but I think that they are a serious MLS difference maker from becoming one of us, like a union, a, a TFC, a, a Columbus. I think that's what, what it, they're missing there. But again, I agree with you guys. I think the union find a way to win this game. I think it'll be a three, two, four, two win here. Um, and we will be going crazy. We will absolutely be going crazy moving on to the next round there, but it is business as usual when it comes to the union against the reps. You got to get it done. You have to get it done. Yep. Any last thoughts, my, my good men. No, I'm excited to, I'll be down there again. Uh, yes, tomorrow. sir. I know uh, you'll be with me, John. Yes, sir. We will be giving you guys the full Duke by the River experience. Of course, you know, I will be doing my vlog game. We will get some content up on the Twitter account. Make sure to follow Duke by the River pod. Um, Tim and I will be, you know, collabing a lot, doing a lot of stuff. We'll try to get some interviews um, and all that good stuff, guys. We'll keep you up to date and prepared uh, throughout the game. But it should be a lot of fun. Absolutely. I can't wait, Tim. I absolutely yeah, can't. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Yes, sir. Justin, what are you doing for the game uh, tomorrow? Uh, I'll, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be chilling at home. Nice. I, uh, did, tomorrow's my, my one day going into the office. So gotcha. Gotcha. Be a little bit of a, a time crunch getting back and <laughs> doing my usual stuff before, yes, you know, sir. before the game, but I will be sitting on the couch drinking ham <laughs> and I, I will admit probably for the first 10, 15 minutes being a little nervous. That's just, that's just how I yeah. am with most games. I start. I start nervous and kind of ease into it. So we'll, we'll see. It'll probably be the same, but the union could put an early goal. It might put my, my mind at ease a bit, but as, oh, yeah. as, 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 you know, I say, as Jason Kelsey said in the Super Bowl parade, it's the whole <laughs> damn team, every <laughs> one of them. And I, I, I want to see when we win MLS cup, the receipts, we're going to be pulling out the, <laughs> I mean, as, as, you know, as we did with the supporter shield thing, we're pulling out, you know, voice recordings and pictures and articles, and it's gonna, we're gonna document this. And <laughs> I don't expect anything less from the union and from the union faithful to be as petty as possible, yeah. especially when we beat Bruce Arena for a fifth time this season. Could you imagine if, like, Casper Shavilko goes, like, if we win, like, the parade, he goes full Kelsey, and he's like, that Andrew Weeby is a joke! <laughs> <laughs> they, they said, they said Andrew Wooten 
couldn't, couldn't, couldn't score a goal. They said, they said Mark McKenzie, too short to be a center back. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. That would absolutely be great. Could Kelsey I, just come and do the I parade? Like right now? Be, I feel like it would be Bedoya doing that, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bedoya, oh like, God. drunk it, as hell. It, no, with his, yeah. his, no, 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 wait. It'd be, it'd be Joe, Bendick. Hand. Joe Bendick. There you go. From the stories I've heard about Joe, it might Joe be Bendick. Joe Bendick. I mean, uh, uh, like, Bender. <laughs> when I was there, when, when they won the Supporter Shield and they brought the beer onto the, the field, it was him and Jim Curtin carrying the beer. Because <laughs> I'm ready to get yeah. drunk. I didn't do shit, but I'm ready to get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I deserve this too. He does. Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, hey, thanks again for listening to another episode of Dupe Either. That's all we got for you guys today. Make sure to enjoy the match tomorrow. And if you see Tim and I, make sure to give us a good a six feet hello. How are you? <laughs> Go Union, right? Yeah. Awesome stuff, guys. Make sure uh, to check it. Check us out on PSN Radio. Make sure to like and subscribe uh, to this video on um, Ed Parcero Philly's YouTube channel. And guys, do not forget. Go Union, guys. Enjoy this game. We got Tim Lomaguth. We got Justin Freiberg. I'm in Parcero Philly. And make sure you guys dupe on. I'll talk to you guys very soon.